All right, good day, ladies and gentlemen. Third video of the day, and this will be my last one, I imagine. So, I just want to go over some of these comments. Uh, this person here asked, during the tribulation, as well as today, it will take trust, faith in the Lord, in His Word, Book of Revelation, to not to, to, to deny the mark because it will likely cost them their life, beheaded for not taking the mark. All right, um, so uh, the mark, obviously, meaning the mark of the beast, right? And so the question is, what is the mark of the beast? Okay, um, I've heard the number, I'm sure you have to heard a number of theories. And Revelation 13, 17, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. All right, so there are three uh, descriptions, if you will, of what the mark of the beast is. Now, um, first of all, this has to be a, a spiritual mark and not a physical mark so if i could explain this like in this sort of way it is those people who are putting their trust in the government all right republicans democrats independents green party what have you these people that are into politics are putting their faith their trust in the government okay so when you're looking at this and you see the beast in like in revelation specifically when it's talking about the beast it's talking about government all right whether you want to call it the one world government or just government however you want to look at it it's politics it's politicians right and so uh the mark has to be those that are putting their trust in the government system and so we are all born into the government system all right so you you have bank accounts you have social security numbers and so you're automatically tied into the beast system if you will all right so this is all spiritual it's not a physical mark so when it says um if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand this is a spiritual mark in your uh, forehead which uh, represents your imagination or your your you know your mind if you will or in your hand which represents your work so in your thoughts or in your work uh, if you worship the government if you res have respect for uh, the politicians in government in, in essence if you trust them then you are worshiping the beast, right? Okay, that's that's the only way that I can explain it. Now, uh, I understand it's probably that's not probably going to convince uh, anybody, but think about this. All right, so you want to say that some people want to say the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Well, all right, let, let's. Uh, follow through with that logic okay so how many people are getting a vaccine in their forehead none nobody <laughs> it's it's not happening it's never going to happen okay so let's say you want to so well it's not the vaccine it's a computer chip and the vaccine just sort of represents this computer chip that's coming all right so how many people are getting a computer chip in their forehead none it's not going to happen it's never going to happen all right this is a symbolic language and it's a you know a spiritual language, if you will. It's speaking in terms of spiritualness, if you will. So, my challenge to you would be define exactly what is the mark of the beast. I contend it's a spiritual mark. In that, uh, I when I take a step back and I see all these people in my family, in my community, and in people online, and so on and so forth, a lot of people are you know, right or left, they're complaining about one side or complaining about the other side. All right. It's like what I've, what I tell people, uh, you know, me and my mom used to argue politics all the time. 
And I would say, Mom, those Democrats are liars. And she would say, no, Jimmy, those Republicans are all liars. Well, it turns out we were both right because they are all liars. All right. So uh, if you take a step back and take get out of politics, man, I mean, that's 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 how they suck you in. Right. That's the snare. That's the you know, it's a whirlwind and you get caught up in it. You get thrown away. All right. So my, like, again, my challenge is if the mark of the beast is not related to politics or government, uh, then what is it? it, it I mean, just go ahead and be honest and say, well, I think it's the vaccine or I think it's a computer chip and then try to explain this away. Try to, you know, just go ahead and say, hey, I think people are going to get computer chips in their foreheads. It's never going to happen. And you're going to eventually come to that realization. All right. All right. And so uh, this uh, person says during the tribulation, as well as today, he's he's drawn two dots, if you will, the tribulation and today. Now, all he needs to do is connect the dots. Tribulation is happening today. All right. There's there's no way you could draw a line between them. All right. So we are going through great tribulation today. No question about it. So and then uh, Alex here, he asked, what are the false or what? Or I'm sorry. Who are these false teachers who teach lies? Now, I, I'm, I'm thinking he's in the context he's asking about who are these people that are teaching that angels are having sex or like in Jude, who, who are these people that are teaching Jude says that angels wanted to have sex with men in Sodom. And there, there's a number of them. I've heard this over and over again. It drives me nuts because it never mentions angels wanting to have sex with the men in Sodom. It was the, wicked men of Sodom that wanted to have sex with angels. Drives me nuts, man. How, how could you not see that? How could you not know that? Have you ever read the Bible is the first thing that pops in my mind. If you read Jude and think that's talking about angels wanting to have sex with men, it's as to, it tells me that you've never read the original story of uh, Lot offering his daughters uh, to the wicked men of Sodom. Because they wanted to have sex with the angels, and Lot wasn't going to have it. All right, so uh, I don't want to name names. All right, so you just I want to bring awareness so that when you see them, you'll come across them, and you'll remember. All right. So, and then um, Mike in Ohio, uh, he says, "I 100% uh, agree. I fell for this lie until God revealed the truth to me. The giants were the tyrants of their time." The giants were tyrants. There's no question about it. Uh, I don't doubt that at all. That the giants before the flood had great power. They and that essentially says that in verse four, right? And the sons of God were actually believers. No, wrong. Uh, who are led by the Spirit? Romans eight fourteen. There, there was a distinction. There's a reason why. All these laws and commandments were put in place. All right. And the the promises were to create a division between the sons of God and the sons of the wicked. All right. So bef this was after the flood. So before the flood, they were all sons of Adam, which meant they were all sons of God. They had a great opportunity and they blew it. Just like Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden and they blew it. And just like you today, if you think you're going to save yourself, you're going to blow it. Okay, so then he talks about the daughters of men were the bloodline of Cain. All right, I believe, he says. Now, I, I want to be as fair as possible. but So Cain uh, came from Eve, just like I talked about yesterday or the other day, is that, uh, you know, Seth came from Eve. Cain came from Eve, Abel came from Eve, you came from Eve, we all came from Eve. Eve is the mother of all living, so there is only one bloodline that goes directly back to Eve. There are not two bloodlines ever. And so it's not supported with anything in the Bible. Everybody goes back, there's one blood, and that blood goes from Eve, and then the blood of Jesus covers all of our sin. 